Hey guys, so today we are talking about elements, compounds, and mixtures. So let's go ahead and get started with elements. Elements are going to be pure uh, and made up of all of the same atoms. So uh, if, for example, like if we think about our piece of aluminum that we use during the periodic table lab, um, and we were to look at the atoms of your piece of aluminum and look at the atoms of my piece of aluminum, they would be exactly the same because they are pure aluminum atoms and they all look the same. So again, an element is going to be pure, all the atoms are exactly the same, and what it's trying to show you in this picture on the left here is that all the atoms of gold are exactly the same and it's just one element, one type of atom. A compound is going to be when two different atoms combine. Uh, at least two different, it could be more than that, but they have to be different atoms or different elements that are actually combining with the chemical reaction, uh, which creates a bond between them, and it's actually going to make another pure substance. For example, in this one, it's sodium chloride or table salt. So a compound has to be a, the combination of two or more different elements that have a chemical bond. And the way that I imagine it is it's kind of like the two atoms are holding hands. Or if you look at the bottom here, where you have an example of sodium chloride, there's a chemical bond between them. Uh, you also have another example over here, the water molecule. You've got oxygen and you've got two hydrogen atoms that are bonded together. So that's a compound. Now it's also considered pure because you have a new substance here. Uh, that uh, has different properties, right? We talked about how sodium and chlorine have different properties when they're separate and when they combine to make uh, table salt. So it's still going to be considered a pure substance, but it's going to be different elements that make it. A mixture is going to keep its own properties. So we talked about how a compound is going to have bonds between the different elements. A mixture is not going to have bonds. So if you imagine the atoms holding hands in a compound, these atoms are not, or these uh, substances aren't. They're just kind of sitting next to each other and hanging out. And so the, the pieces here are going to keep their own properties. For example, here in the trail mix, the M&Ms still taste like M&Ms, right? If I'm only eating the M&Ms, they're still going to taste like M&Ms because they all kept their own properties. And it's going to be easily separated. With a compound, if I want to try to separate them, I'm going to need to have a chemical reaction to separate those bonds. But with a mixture, I can separate it with a physical change. For example, with a salad, I do not like tomatoes, so I pick out the tomatoes and there you go, you don't have any more tomatoes. The uh, So a mixture, like I was saying, the parts are going to keep their own properties, they're going to keep their uh, original properties, and here it's really easy to separate the sugar and the water. So you have a, um, a paper that looks like this, and we're going to cut it out and, and glue it together to make our notes. So elements, if you look at the pictures that you have here at the top, uh, the very first picture, you have just one of the same type of atom over and over again. In the second and third picture, you have two atoms that are the same atom, but they're stuck together. You can imagine as this as being like two oxygen atoms that are stuck together. Um, and so they are still going to be considered an element because it's still the same type of atom that's bonding with, the, with uh, itself, basically. Uh, so they're found on the periodic table. You cannot make these simpler because an atom is as simple as it gets. And the properties are going to be the same. Uh, like I said, with your piece of aluminum and my piece of aluminum, if I tried to melt them, they would still both have the same melting point, right? If I tried to get them to react with something else, they would still react with the same, you know, with that substance the same way. Um, and they're made up of only one type of atom. With a compound here, you have two different atoms or elements that have combined and they've bonded with each other. So they've made a chemical bond. There's been a chemical change. Uh, they're always going to contain the same proportion. Like it's going to, if you look at water down here at the bottom, you have a two to one ratio, two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom. Uh, the properties are going to be different from the elements that make it up. Like we talked about sodium chloride, the properties are different when they combine. Uh, they can be made simpler, but only by another chemical change. So in order to break those bonds, I'm going to have a, a chemical change. Uh, to, this is the only way that that's going to happen. Uh, they're going to be made up of two or more different elements uh, that are chemically combined. You also have sugar down here at the bottom. So this is uh, glucose, C6H12O6. So I've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms that are making this compound. 
And then for a mixture, you can have a mixture of compounds, a mixture of elements, a mixture of elements and compounds. And so like these here are both uh, compounds. These are compounds right here. And then I can also have uh, elements. So, oh, I forgot one compound. Here's another compound. Uh, and so here are my elements. These are my pure ones. Okay. Those are the ones that are the, the same. Um, so a mixture is going to be made up of elements and or compounds uh, that are not chemically combined. So they're just hanging out next to each other. They're not combined with each other. They're, there's no bond. And they can be separated physically. Um, so like I talked about the M&Ms or I talked about the tomatoes. And they're going to have the same properties as they did before. The M&Ms are still going to taste like M&Ms. So let's talk really quick about a chemical formula. So down here at the bottom, I have a chemical formula, H2O. And I told you that scientists are lazy. They, uh, we talked about how with um, elements, we use symbols instead of having to write out the name. Well, for compounds, we can also use formulas so that we don't have to write everything out. And it's actually telling me how many atoms I have of different things. For example, here, uh, it's telling me that I have one oxygen and two hydrogen right here. And so this two right here is talking about the H. And then the O doesn't have anything next to it, so that means I just have one oxygen. So that's water. So that little number next to it is called a subscript. Uh, sub means underneath, like subway or a submarine. And so it's always talking about the element that's before it or the symbol that's right before it. Down here at the bottom, you have sugar. So this is C6H12O6. That means I have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens, which I have a, a model of sugar in the classroom. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about anything. Uh, and thanks for watching. Thank you for visiting Somo's YouTube channel. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. And don't forget to like and subscribe.